Major changes are coming to the Texas, Colorado and Western, and that means the Helix is coming down on Ron's Trains and Things right now. Hi, I'm Ron of Ron's Trains and Things, and if you'd like to see more of Model Railroad tips, tools, and techniques, then be sure and subscribe down below and click that little bell icon so you can catch future videos. Well, as I'm sure you can already tell just by the sound in this video, there are some major changes that are happening in my household, and that has some impact on my model railroad layout as well. I've hinted at some of this a little bit through some comments in the community tab on my channel, uh, but today I'm going to tell you a little bit about what is actually happening. Uh, we're in the process of doing a little remodeling in our house, and uh, part of that means a major change to the basement. Uh, the reason why the sound is so terrible today is because we're in the process of replacing the flooring. We've taken up all the carpet, getting ready to put down some new laminate flooring down here. And so uh, probably for a couple of weeks, the video is going to have a little bit of an echoey sound. Just not a lot I can do about that until we get uh, a little further along in some of these renovations. Along with the, the changes happening in the basement, uh, really means two things. Number one, it means uh, having the opportunity to give an expansion to the layout, and that's going to mean tons of great videos on some subjects that I've never been able to cover on my channel before, including uh, some track planning, some bench work, uh, backdrops, all kinds of, of, of great stuff. Uh, along with that, uh, that expansion is going to take place right here uh, at the, the, the end of the two decks of, of my layout uh, where they're connected by the helix. Uh, this helix is coming out. In fact, that's what we're going to be doing today is taking this helix out and then we're going to be replacing it with a, a new and improved helix uh, further up on the other end of the expansion coming up in uh, probably in several weeks. So today, what I wanna do is I want to, uh, to let you join me as I take the old Helix down. And as I do, I'm gonna tell you some things that I learned and some mistakes that I made that I'm going to improve upon with a new Helix. This was the first Helix I had ever built. And I, I looked at several different uh, ideas and options of, of Helixes that people had built. Uh, over time and try to take uh, their different examples to do the, the, the best job, the strongest job, uh, and at the same time not make it overly complicated. Uh, and for the most part, it didn't come out too bad, but there are a couple things that I definitely want to do differently, a couple of uh, things that I want to improve, and I'm going to show you what those are today, and then of course we'll see those as we build the new Helix coming along. But before we do any of that, uh, first I've got to move this train that's been parked at the top of the Helix for about a month. Uh, and also, uh, the upper deck here at the top of the Helix is the town of Bowie, and I need to clear some of the structures out of that area just so we don't uh, mess anything up or, or break anything today. Uh, and when we get that done, we're going to start taking this Helix down. Check out our sponsor, Midwest Model Railroad. With some of the best prices and customer service in the business, they're your one-stop model railroad shop. MidwestModelRR.com. Link in the description. It turned out that I couldn't get power to the locomotives on this intermodal train, so I simply pushed it back into Wichita Falls by hand. I then removed the structures from Bowie. My camera seemed intent on focusing on the fascia instead of what I was doing. One of the benefits of the new layout expansion is that it will allow me to put some distance between Bowie and Wichita Falls. On this version of the layout, a train that is in Bowie is also in Wichita Falls and vice versa. It's been a real frustration. It will also allow me to expand my version of Bowie, Texas. I think I'm going to be much happier with that. I didn't get enough adhesive on the track in the Helix, as evidenced by the fact that the track connected to this re-railer at the top of the Helix just pulled right up off of the subroad bed. I unsoldered the re-railer. I can use a soldering wick and clean this piece up to be used again later. The short straight bridge piece between the Helix and the upper deck is simply screwed down on each end. I removed it, leaving the helix completely free from the upper deck. 
Well, here I am in everyone's favorite place to hang out, underneath the layout, because before I start taking the helix all apart, I've got to take apart the wiring, and all of the wires from the helix are tied in here to a, uh, a sub bus uh, that I can't really see, but I think you can. Uh, that's my load limiting bulb, and uh, somewhere up in here is... Right here is a black sub bus. Here's the red sub bus. Uh, Got to take those loose. And uh, again, as you see, I really overwired this thing uh, as I literally connected in feeders on both sides of every turn. That's something else I'll be doing a little bit differently when I build the new Helix. Uh, I think one set of feeders for every turn will be adequate since I'll be uh, soldering all the rail joints together. So anyway, going to get this taken loose. And then uh, we'll see if we can't get this helix down. Well, I haven't had an opportunity to introduce you all to our COVID dog, Snoop. Uh, Snoop is a second generation golden doodle. And we got him as a puppy just eight weeks old, just about the time the whole COVID thing hit. And uh, he looks like uh, quite a bit of dog so far, but he's still just a puppy. He's only five months old. Smartest dog I've ever had, and we are really enjoying him. Just thought I'd introduce you all because he's hanging around while I'm tearing down the Helix. When I built this Helix, I, I really did not build it with the idea of moving it intact. So uh, as we take this helix down, I'm literally going to have to tear it apart. Uh, much of it could come apart uh, in, in a unit, uh, but the bottom layer of the helix itself is screwed directly into the risers, and there's no way to get to those screws without taking the layer above that off. Um, so we're going to have to kind of take this thing down uh, at least several sections at a time. Whenever I constructed this, uh, I used a combination of wood glue and, uh, and three inch uh, brads with a, a, a pneumatic nailer uh, to hold it together. The brads really were to hold it together while the glue dried. The glue is what really makes this solid. Uh, now there were a couple of things that I told you that I, uh, that I did on this layout that I wanted to definitely do differently on the new Helix. Uh, one thing was when I built this, uh, this room was already finished when we moved in and had carpet down. Uh, and so this helix is mounted to the wall in the back, but it needed some support in the front. And so I put it on a couple of legs and the only option I had was to set those right into the carpet. Uh, over time, uh, they settled into the carpet more and more and it actually allowed this front corner of the helix to sag a little bit. Uh, not enough that it caused a major operational problem, uh, but it definitely uh, took my, what should have been a continuous two and a quarter percent grade uh, up the helix, and it made certain parts of the helix, certain sides of it more flat and other sides more steep, definitely made for a challenge climbing the hill. Uh, the other thing that I did that, that I really want to make sure I do differently next time, and that is when I glued my track down, I glued it down exactly the same way I do on the layout, which means that I used a latex caulk uh, and I used a very thin layer. On the layout, I want to use a real thin layer. I don't want it to come up between the ties. I want it to be easy to ballast over. In the Helix, I'm not ballasting. So I don't have the extra support of the ballast and the glue on the ballast to hold the track in place. Uh, I also don't have to worry about the, how the ballast looks. Um, what that meant was that thin layer of, of latex caulk uh, in one place in particular uh, turned loose. It didn't hold the, the track well. Now, if it had turned loose in the middle of a joint of track, probably would have been okay. But naturally, Murphy's Law came into play and it turned loose right at a joint between two tracks and it happened in the very back of the helix against the wall and down on the third turn up so in, in a place it was just almost impossible to get to to repair consequently there was a kink there and for uh the last year and a half i've had a real problem with trains derailing in the helix at that point uh, so that's something I definitely want to do to do differently. Uh, and again, as we get to building the new Helix, you're going to find there are several things I'm going to do differently. I'm going to build it a little larger uh, in that um, this is a 36 inch Helix. The track center diameter is 36 inches and the new Helix the diameter is going to be 44 inches. 
So it's going to have a lot more room. The curves are going to be broader. There'll be less drag that way. It's also going to allow me to reduce the, um, the, the, the incline from two and a quarter percent to, uh, to two percent. Uh, so it'll be a, a little less of a, of a steep climb. Uh, and uh, also it's going to reduce the, the number of turns from nine and a half to eight and a half. So I'll have one less turn to worry about and still have plenty of space in between for, for the trains. And another step before we take the helix down, I keep finding more things we have to do. I have to take off this bit of fascia that actually wraps around the bottom of the helix. And uh, that is an eight foot piece of fascia that reaches from out of sight to your right there, all the way around to uh, the end of it is right at the left end of that waybill box. So I'm gonna have to take down that waybill box and then take that entire strip of fascia off. But this fascia won't be wasted. Um, I'm gonna be able to actually rip this down, I think, and use part of this uh, on maybe the fascia of the upper deck on the new part. I also want to do some more fascia work while I'm at this because if you look right there at the end of my uh, my highway scene uh, that is uh, uh, north uh, northwest loop 820 in Fort Worth and uh, sorry having trouble getting it in focus but um, I ended up building that a little differently than I had planned and and as you can see um, the um, Part of the foam from the highway did not cover up uh, with the fascia. The fascia was in place first because I ended up building that a little differently. So I think I want to recut that piece of fascia as well, which means I'm going to have to reach from the left side of that way bill box around that corner. That's another eight foot piece of fascia that I'm going to have to replace uh, because I just don't like the way that looks. So anyway, that's a, another project for another day. For now, we'll come back to the helix and We'll get this fascia down. For putting up my fascia, uh, I use these, uh, uh, they come by, by different names, but uh, when I bought them, they called them uh, upholstery screws. Uh, they have, it almost looks like they have a washer on them, and in fact, it's just a large head of the screw. And I'll put that in there and hold on to those to reuse. My waybill boxes that I use, you can buy these from Micromark in various places. Uh, I built my own. They literally are just made out of uh, eighth inch masonite hardboard and cut the little pieces to fit in between, glued them together, clamped them up, let them dry. Use these for years. They work great. And there we go. We have the fascia off. One step closer to getting the helix down. Now I'm going to attempt to, to take this helix apart uh, just below the second turn uh, so that I can just reveal the screws. See if I can take the upper uh, several uh, turns of this apart kind of in one piece. I don't know if it's going to work or not, but I'm going to give it a try. Um, and I'm literally just going to take a crowbar and try to uh, to break these apart. I apologize if this gets a little bit loud. And we have this much of the helix to come off.
still connected to a couple of rails there, wasn't I? And that's all right because again, all this is is the bottom turn of the helix. So uh, not worried about that. That's all coming out as well. There is the top eight and a half turns of the helix, uh, which I was able to take apart intact. And then as I turn pan back around here, uh, I want you to see the base of the helix here. And uh, I'll give you just a, a little overview about how I built this helix. I, I'll show you a lot more detail when I build the new helix, because I'm gonna build it basically the same way, just correcting a few, uh, few mistakes. Uh, for, for this helix, of course, the first and most important thing was to have a good solid base. Uh, so, you know, I, I knew the size of the helix I wanted and um, used one by threes to just build a really good, sturdy uh, kind of a box base for the helix. Uh, it's angled, you know, on, on the, the sides up here to, uh, to allow for the curve because I wanted the fascia to be able to curve around with the helix without all those angles. So I made them to fit underneath the, uh, the, the, the helix itself and then used risers to support the, uh, the, the sub road bed of the helix. Uh, the first turn of the helix uh, was literally cut out of one solid piece of plywood. And so it is one solid turn. This is one solid piece. Now I didn't do that for the rest of the helix. That would have wasted tons and tons and tons of plywood. Uh, but doing that for the first turn uh, allowed me to uh, use um, a level, an electronic digital level, and, and get exactly the rise that I wanted all the way around the first turn of, of the helix from the time at the point that it started to, uh, to the initial point at which it overlapped uh, where the circle was cut in two. Uh, it took a lot of time adjusting the risers here, making sure that I had the the grade on the first turn of the helix uh, exactly perfect. Once you have the grade of the first turn of the helix perfect, uh, if you've done your math correctly, you should know exactly how much distance there should be between each turn and the next turn directly above it. Uh, and so then all I had to do was build those the, uh, or cut those blocks, the spacer blocks, exactly to that height and as long as my first turn, the, the uh, grade is, is right, is perfect, every turn after that should be exactly perfect, should exactly match it as well, because I cut all of my, my risers the, the same. So that's, that's how I basically built the helix. Um, now I want to go ahead and get this down. So they have a terminal strip here and I can save that and use that again on uh, the new part as well. We'll just take it off. I'll save that. It took me a month to build this, Phoenix, this helix. I uh, spent the entire month of February in 2012. Uh, so this, this helix has been here for eight years. Pry that loose where that insulated joint is. There's one and there's two. It's all loose. There we go. And there is the first turn of the helix. And here you can see the risers where I graduated down for, uh, for that first the main thing now is to get these legs off so I can get my flooring in. The rest of it we can worry about later. There's the one that was holding all of the weight. And this sagged a little bit then. There's not a lot extra holding this up out here. I don't have any braces back into the wall up here. It's all being held on these two legs. And as I'm looking at this, I think this front of this, which I definitely do not want, uh, I think it can come off 
think it'll come off pretty easily. We're going to see. There we go. I think that's uh, far enough for right now. Um, again, I, I'm pretty sure all of this bench work here that you're looking at will come out right back to basically where you can see in the camera. Uh, this is the point at which it kind of sticks out beyond the bench work over here on this side in front of Saginaw. Uh, so um, this piece will come loose. Uh, it just kind of screws onto the end of the other bench work here. I'll have to, uh, to, to trim this plywood here, uh, make a nice straight cut on it, and uh, then we'll be ready to put another piece of bench work in here. I'll have to curve the fascia. We'll have to do some reworking of the backdrop as well because this goes back here straight, and uh, I'll need that to curve. I uh, want a nice coved uh, corner there, and to make that happen, I'll probably have to come back. Oh, there's actually a joint uh, just barely out of camera. Well, you can just see my hand right there. There's a joint in the backdrop right there. So this piece of backdrop will come down. Uh, we'll start a piece right there, make a curve. Again, all of that is going to be the subject for uh, future videos as we continue with this project. And here you have it. The Helix is out. I have no idea what I'm going to do with this. I have a feeling it might just hang in my garage for a little while, uh, just because I'm not sure I'm really ready to totally destroy it. But I'm going to tell you, I'm really excited about what is coming. Uh, this little bit of demolition is going to give way to uh, 12 feet of expansion on both decks of my layout and an opportunity to, uh, to fix some of the few real problems that I had with the Texas, uh, Colorado, and Western. Uh, I'm really excited about, about what that's going to mean. And again, I'm going to show you how I build a new helix as well as some bench work, backdrop, fascia, track laying, track planning. We've got a ton of great stuff uh, in store for, for this expansion. So be sure and keep watching because I know you're going to find some things that you're really going to enjoy. Well, hey, if you enjoyed this demolition video, you'll enjoy some model building videos as well. And you'll find some in the link in the corner of your screen right now. Take a moment to check out my Amazon page or my Amazon pick of the week. Some great products that I know you'll enjoy for model railroading, photography and video, and tons of, of other things. Uh, check those out in the description down below. And if you'd like some more model railroad content right now, check out the links that are on your screen. And be sure and join me each Tuesday as I bring you even more great model railroad videos. And I look forward to seeing you then. Tim, Lizzie?